When I wrote Wizard, The Life and Times of Nikola Tesla, my main goal was to establish what was Tesla's real role in the inventions of the induction motor, electrical power distribution, fluorescent and neon lights, and artificial intelligence. The story is so intriguing, I realized that they were missing parts. There were other things that were worth talking about. Tesla played a big role in three major wars. And I put all this information into this new book called Nikola Tesla, Wizard at War, where I discuss Tesla's relationship to the Spanish-American War. Tesla had invented the remote control robotic boat, which he saw actually as a mechanism to end all wars. In World War I, he had wireless communication, and I discuss at length Tesla's role in relationship to people like Marconi and other inventors. And in World War II, Tesla had his particle beam weapon, and I discuss the two possible top secret weapons that would be working on by the U.S. government, the atomic bomb and Tesla's particle beam weapon. And after he died, there's a great mystery as to what happened to his papers. And this book really gets into solving a lot of the mystery of what happened to Tesla's secret papers. So I'm very happy with the new book, Nikola Tesla, Wizard at War, and I hope you will enjoy the book as well. also have a PowerPoint from Dr. Seifer, if you wait one moment for us. Dr. Seifer is coming to us from Rhode Island today. Uh, PowerPoint's coming up now. And we're very happy to have you here. Okay, so... Uh, I just start talking, right? Craig will be advancing your slides for you. So whenever you see it's at the right spot, do you feel free to start. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this is the first slide, Tesla Wizard at War. And then uh, we could go to the next slide. Just, just one second, okay? Thank you, all time. Well, the next slide is uh, a picture of my book, my, my first book, which is uh, Wizard, Life and Times of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, next slide. Here we go. And um, this book started actually in 1976. I had never heard of Tesla's name until... Uh, that at that time, I was working on a, an entirely different project, and I was in New York City, and I came across a story about a man who was born from the planet Venus who had given us all these inventions, fluorescent lights, remote control, wireless communication, induction motor. His name was Tesla, and I thought that was pretty crazy. But when I started to look at, uh, I was in the library, I figured why not really uh, see if this guy really existed, and I found out he really did exist. And then I got a book of his patents. And once I got a book of his patents, I knew I was sitting on a huge story. But what I needed to do then was to find out why his name disappeared and whether or not he really was the inventor of, for instance, the radio or the hydroelectric power system. So I went into the heart and soul of all of those uh, inventions. And at the time, this is through the 1970s and 1980s and even the early 1990s, there was a lot of animosity towards Tesla. They were uh, scientific people who were claiming that someone else invented uh, the induction motor. And even today, there are books being written now which cloud the issue uh, coming from uh, universities like Princeton University. Um, so this was a very important thing for me to do to document everything. There's about a thousand endnotes in here and about 400 letters written. Okay, the next slide. This is the same book, Wizard, in Chinese. It's been translated into about eight languages uh, and it's just neat to open up the book and see the whole thing in, in Chinese. Okay, next slide. So what happened was um, after finishing the book, I finished the book in 1996. 
um, I continued to lecture and continue to do research. And certain questions began to arise in me. And one of the things I started to focus on was what was Tesla's relationship to all the, the different wars that he interacted with. And the first major war that he interacted with was the Spanish-American War. And so in 1898, he showed his remote control robotic boat and that on the left there is Madison Square Garden. And uh, this boat though, is a very complicated uh, mechanism. I think he deserved the Nobel Prize just for this boat. Uh, let's look at the next slide. And here you see some of the uh, detail inside the, the boat. Um, there's actually a logic board in here. And he really is uh, the inventor or one of the inventors of what becomes uh, just uh, how, how computers operate. Computers use a binary code. And in the developing this new book, uh, Wizard at War, I found out that what Tesla did was he aimed the rudder of this boat in one direction and had a counter spring in. So if he shut off the, uh, the current, the, the uh, rudder would move back to the other side. And, and then if he put the current back on, the spring would come back into play and it would go, into, go back to the other side. So you could actually steer the boat by turning the current on or off. So steering a boat is a very complex process. And he reduced it down to an on off switch, which is a binary code which is the uh, foundation of computers. Okay, uh, next slide. Um, now what Tesla did there, if you, if you look at that boat, was, he had two antennas that were going up. These were two different frequencies. And the reason why he has two different frequencies is because he doesn't want interference. That was one of the complaints of someone, you know, you set out a remote control torpedo boat and someone else uh, takes over and then it, you could have the boat turn around and bomb your own ship. So he wanted to create protected privacy. And what he did was he figured out how to combine different frequencies. Once he multiplied frequencies, he was able to realize that he could create an unlimited number, an unlimited number of wireless uh, channels. And this, of course, he told Morgan in 1901, he said, I can create an unlimited number of wireless channels. This um, John Hayes Hammond Jr. called the prophetic genius patent and is the basis basically of cell phone technology. It is the way for every single person on the planet to have their own uh, uh, telephone. Um, and so that is all part of this one invention. Also though, he said that this was an invention that was a prototype of the first thinking machine. So when we see people, the kids playing with remote control boats or, or cars or trucks and they're zipping around, Tesla saw that that machine had intelligence inside it, built inside it. So this was a very complicated uh, invention. Um, you look at the garage door opener or the TV remote, that's all linked uh, to this as well. And obviously the radio, and as I mentioned, cell phone technology. Um, okay, next slide. This was an article uh, and you can see Vanny Bush's name here and he, he will show up later in this story uh, of a thinking machine which Bush created in 1927. Uh, Benny Bush started the Raytheon Corporation and he was a, the Dean of uh, uh, the uh, Physics Department at MIT. And uh, as I said, his, he will come in, back into this story uh, later on, but obviously he knew about Tesla and he knew about Tesla's remote control robotic boat. Okay, next slide. Yeah, here we see the idea of a machine that could think. There was a, a book, um, written by Bulwer Lighton at the time, where he talked about Vril power, the coming race, and it was a race of robots. And we're living in that right now. In fact, Tesla actually even wrote about cars that would drive by themselves. I found an article by that, about that. And so that, that's the world that we are entering. And he was you know, the first inventor of the, of the physical uh, robot, but Bulwer, Bulwer Lighton came up with that idea about 20 years before Bulwer Lighton was uh, the most famous author next to Charles Dickens. He was uh, the guy who's, who wrote the uh, opening line. It was a dark and stormy light, uh, night. Um, so there was a question whether Tesla got his idea from Bulwer Lighton and he said he didn't, but it's hard to believe that he was, was not influenced by, by that great author. Okay, next slide. So we're at the Spanish-American War 
And this particular uh, political cartoon is actually discussing Tesla because Tesla is sending electricity through his body. And, uh, and so you can see that Tesla entered you know, the mainstream here in, in the late 1890s. He had already, as we saw with some of the other talks today, he had harnessed Niagara Falls and he was world famous at this time. But he said that this remote control boat would end all wars because if everybody had one of these boats, no one would, would invade uh, any other uh, country with a ship because the ships would be sunk. So this was seen as an ultimate weapon. Uh, next slide. And uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, had gone down, you know, uh, he was a rough rider. And right after he came back, he met with Tesla. Tesla was good friends with uh, Robinson, uh, Corrine Robinson, who was Teddy Roosevelt's uh, sister. So I found a letter that uh, he writes to uh, Corrine Robinson, where he says, uh, it was very nice to meet your brother. He doesn't mention Teddy Roosevelt's name. So I had to do a bit of research to figure out who the heck his brother, or her brother was, and it turned out to be uh, the governor of New York and about to become vice president and president of the United States. Okay, next slide. So this is a picture of Mark Twain and Joseph Jefferson, and that's uh, Dickinson Alley in the back. He's the photographer. And uh, Twain was in Tesla's lab uh, about 1895, and so was Joseph Jefferson, and these pictures were in the Century Magazine. Well, Tesla had invented this remote control robotic boat, which he said could end all war. It was, it was the idea of drone warfare. They, they also had aerial drones at the time. You could drop bombs. Um, and Twain was very interested in selling these uh, remote control robotic boats uh, in, while, he, while he was traveling in Europe. So I have uh, the, the entire letter that, that Twain writes from Europe uh, asking Tesla for the rights to uh, sell this to uh, the kings and queens of Europe uh, as a way to end all war. Okay, the next slide. So this idea of Tesla's link to war is how I came up with the, the title of the book. I wanted to keep the word wizard because the first book was entitled Wizard. And so it's called Tesla Wizard at War, The Genius, The Particle Beam Weapon, and The Pursuit of Power. And uh, the book will be published in April. So I'm looking forward. I haven't seen the galley yet, I'm, uh, but I've corrected, you know, uh, uncorrected galleys. And so I'm looking forward to this. Okay, the next slide. So this was uh, shot by me um, while we were filming the te television show, The Tesla Files. And if you look in the back, you see some people walking over the grounds. They're uh, doing ground penetrating radar. And what we discovered, uh, which is in uh, the third segment of this show, was Tesla really had tunnels. And uh, when I wrote Wizard, uh, he talked about these earth grippers that stretched out from the tunnels. And I thought they stretched out like a fan, you know, uh, like a spokes of a wheel. And uh, Gary Peterson thought that they would stretch out one after another, length by length by length. And it was 300 feet of tubing. And he made such a good argument, I, I wasn't uh, uh, sure. Maybe he was right. Maybe it wasn't like spokes of a wheel. But when we got the photograph of the, uh, of the uh, actual tunnels, there were four of them, three of them are 100 feet long, they're about 50 to 60 feet below the ground. And the fourth one's 40 feet long. And right above the tunnels, you can see these spikes uh, coming out like uh, spokes of a wheel, uh, just uh, exactly as I described in Wizard. So that was exciting that I came up with the right idea. Um, and then the big question was, we, when we made the television show, where the, where are the, um, the the blueprints for Warden Cliff? You know, he worked with Stanford White, W.D. Crow was the builder, and we we spent a lot of time and energy to look for the blueprints, but we were unable to find the blueprints. Uh, but no one's really discussed before, before me, really, the real reason for these tunnels. And I hypothesize in the new book that he needed, uh, you know, it, since the, the ground uh, earth grippers were uh, going out at about 50 feet below the ground, and he wanted to go down there for testing, it's tiresome to go up and down six or seven flights uh, every time he wanted to do something. So I think he was going to bring down equipment. I think they might you actually. You want to go by yourselves? Excuse me. Get him as soon as possible. Are we okay? Um, yeah. So this is the next slide, and we see 
uh, the tower in the process of being built. And we see that he has yet to get the top of the tower. So he goes back to JP Morgan and he says, you know, I need to uh, put the uh, cupola on the top. And Morgan looks at the uh, contract and he says, wait a second, this tower is much taller than, than we described. And what Tesla had done was he had doubled the size of the tower because he found out Marconi was infringing his patents. And he wanted to, instead of just sending impulses just from uh, Long Island to, to Europe, particularly to England, so that uh, Morgan could get the stock prices when he was in Europe, he figured that if he doubled the size of the tower, he would then be able to send impulses all around the entire world. This Zoom meeting that we are having right now, Tesla envisioned all of this at the time. It was mostly a wireless uh, uh, telephone at that time that he was trying to create. But on his own, he raised an additional $50,000 to put the cupola on top. Um, and uh, we figured recently $150,000. Uh, I heard the other day that this was worth about $40 million. So this was, you know, a 50, 60, 70 million dollar project uh, at the time. And Morgan, as uh, I explained in detail in Wizard, uh, was simply unwilling to give Tesla the balance of the money. In part, it was Tesla's fault. He had actually breached the contract, but Tesla was telling Morgan, look, it's, a, it's I'm only asking for another hundred thousand dollars. And for Morgan, that wasn't really much money because he was buying paintings for that amount. So Morgan at that point blocked him. And the question is, you know, why did Morgan block him? And I think the, the reasons were, were many. One, as I said, Tesla built a, a larger tower than they agreed upon. Uh, another was Morgan may have had doubts about Tesla's abilities, but also Tesla threatened uh, the, uh, the different uh, industries that Morgan controlled. For instance, he had rubber plantations in Africa. He had copper mines out West. He had lumber yards in Alaska. And all of that was threatened. So in 1906, uh, well, I noticed that Tesla's handwriting falls apart and he suffers a nervous breakdown. Morgan just shuts the door on him and everything collapses. And then there's a run on the uh, stock market again and the market collapses and, and it had to do with the mani manipulation of copper stocks. So I made the case that maybe uh, people realized that once Tesla's wireless system was dead then copper would be worth a lot of money again. And so there was a lot of manipulation on the copper stocks and uh, Teddy Roosevelt was president at the time, and he comes in and he tells uh, Morgan, you have to control the banks because the banks are collapsing. And Morgan did not help one of his friends who ran the Knickerbocker Bank. And that fellow took a gun and shot himself in the stomach and committed suicide. So one of the people that Morgan knew very well committed suicide because Morgan wouldn't give him the money. Um, and it's a big question about Tesla. Uh, to his strength, he comes back from this uh, terrible uh, uh, defeat. Uh, to continue to be create, creative for the next 40 years. Okay, next slide. Yeah, so here we see the cupola, we see the top of the tower. Uh, next slide. Now, uh, Robert Gulka used to stop by my house all the time. He had a, I live in Rhode Island and he was in um, uh, Massachusetts. And he brought over this picture. And you can see here, uh, you see the ladder and to the left of the ladder you'll see a step lead and Tesla never put the central pole inside this tower he never really harnessed the tower except there is some proof that in 1903 he did harness it but since he never put the pole in uh you know to drive the energy up and down the, the tower how did he do it and Golka discovered the lead that's it the step lead there on the left so I think it's a very important uh, picture. There are many pictures of the tower and this lead is in, it's not in most of them. This was from about 1902, 1903. Okay, next slide. So here we see the actual contract with uh, JP Morgan, that's Morgan's signature. And Morgan was king of the world at that time. He was the most powerful man at the world, uh, in the world. And Tess was saying, I'm going to advance the world a century. It's a very sad story uh, that Morgan would not change his mind once he made his decision. That was that, and Tesla was shut out. Um, and his fame really declined greatly uh, at that time. So he had been world famous and then he really became less and less well known as the years went on. And eventually his name just completely disappeared. Uh, when I, in 1976, barely anybody heard of him. 
Okay, next slide. So we're at 1906, the, the tower collapses, uh, not, not that it physically collapses, but the deal collapses. And about 1910, 1911, 1912, the Germans come in and they start the, the German company Telefunken and they build two wireless towers around right before World War I took place. Uh, the one on the left uh, is uh, the Tuckerton plant. That's 850 feet high. It was the tallest building in the world uh, next to the Eiffel Tower, which was taller. And at the right was the Sayville plant. Uh, Joe Sikorsky is working on a, on a movie on Sayville. He did that opening uh, little uh, number uh, with me. Um, and I have to thank Joe for that. But that's a little segment from the film that he's working on. And it's all about Sayville. So Tesla was hired by the Germans to be a, um, a consultant for the Tuckertown plant in New Jersey and also for the Sable plant in, uh, on Long Island. And he was earning about $15,000 from each of these places. That was a lot of money then. You have to multiply it by at least 10. So he was making about equivalent to about maybe $300,000 a year around 1914, 1915. Uh, and he's trying to get the money because Warden Cliff is still up and it's still physically there. So he wants to raise the money uh, to go back and, and, and relaunch Warden Cliff. And then of course, uh, what happens is, you know, World War I in intervenes. Um, next slide. So this is part of the, partly what Tesla envisioned. Here we see an airplane being run. Uh, one of the uh, other speakers earlier talked about wireless transmission of power. And Tesla said that you could transmit a uh, wireless power to airplanes and you wouldn't have to uh, use uh, fuel on the planes and you'd have towers all over the world. If a tower you know, collapsed and lost its power, you would have other towers which would take over. There must be backup systems as well that he would set up. Okay, uh, next slide. So here we see Tesla in 1915. Um, Fritz Lowenstein was his uh, associate and uh, Lowenstein was out in Colorado Springs. We mentioned Coleman Zito, uh, and uh, Zito's son also Tesla uh, worked with. But Lowenstein was at this time now working with John Hayes Hammond Jr. And to Tesla's uh, right is uh, Lee DeForest, who Tesla was, uh, Lee DeForest was enamored with Tesla, tried to work with Tesla many times, but uh, Tesla just didn't have room for him. And DeForest eventually moved to California and actually came back partly just to go to this uh, event. Uh, Jonathan Zenick is right in the center. He was he came over with uh, Ferdinand Braun at the far left. These were the two uh, uh, German uh, physicists who uh, Tucker, uh, who uh, Telefunken wanted to come to the United States because Marconi had sued Telefunken for patent infringement. Now, Telefunken had hired Tesla. So Tesla right at this moment is working with Zenek and with Braun uh, at, at uh, Sayville and also at Tuckerton, mostly at Sayville. And what the Germans had done, what Telefunken had done was they had placed their uh, wireless transmitters on US Navy ships. And I found a letter, which is uh, in, uh, in a wizard, uh, written by Franklin Roosevelt, who was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy. And he said, geez, we're being sued by Marconi. What am I gonna do? I gotta do some research here. Let me go th uh, through the, my log here. And wow, look at this, Tesla predates Marconi. So we can use Tesla's uh, testimony against Marconi in this legal suit. So, Mar uh, so uh, the, Amer uh, you know, the US government the U.S. Navy, through uh, the Assistant Secretary in particular, and Joseph Daniels, who was the Secretary of the Navy, uh, were aligned with the Germans at that time because we had uh, their wireless uh, transmitters aboard our ships. Um, in the center, you see John Stone Stone. He was the president of the electrical company, uh, electrical organization at the time. And he will testify at, at this big uh, meeting in, in Brooklyn. and. Uh, Marconi comes in on, on the Lusitania to also to testify. Zenek testified. Braun's there to testify. Braun and, and Marconi shared the Nobel Prize in wireless in 1909. And Tesla, of course, was extremely angry about that. He wasn't mad at Braun. He was mad at the Nobel Prize Committee. 
uh, for not honoring him. And at the very far left, you see Sarnoff. Sarnoff starts NBC. And he's also working with, uh, will be working with Marconi. So this is a very amazing photo, uh, a rare photo uh, of Tesla with, you know, his, his colleagues. Okay, next slide. So here Marconi comes in, as I said, on the Lusitania, and he goes to Brooklyn and he has a very long deposition. Next slide. And Tesla is going to testify for uh, the uh, U.S. Navy, for Franklin Roosevelt, and also for uh, Telefunken. And Marconi is called back because of the war, but he doesn't go back on the Lusitania. He goes back on another ship under an assumed name, and the Lusitania is sunk. Um, so this is an amazing story. Uh, did they sink the Lusitania in part to kill Marconi because these were competing wireless companies? Um, or was it just a coincidence that he was on that ship? As it turned out, the Lusitania was the fastest ship on the high seas, and 1,500 people, uh, almost, I think 1,200 people died, but almost as many people died on the Lusitania as died uh, on the Titanic, which was three years earlier. John Jacob Astor was on the Titanic, and he died. And when he died, uh, now Tesla was in uh, deep trouble because he owed money uh, to uh, the world of Astoria about almost $20,000 in back rent. And I think, uh, you know, asked to look the other way, but but uh, Bolt, who was now the manager, would not look the other way, and now Tesla was on the hook. So we transferred the property, awarded the property to the world of Astoria to cover his debt with, with the uh, belief that he could get it back once he paid off the debt. Okay, next slide. So if you look on the left here, you know, right in the center, 19 more taken as German spies. Dr. Carl George Frank is the fellow from Telefunken who hired Tesla. He was arrested. Uh, Zenik was arrested and Braun was arrested. And they were sent uh, first to Ellis Island and then uh, eventually to a, a prison camp down in Georgia. And, uh, but, but I have here another very important article on the right. I think it's the most important article ever written uh, in, about Tesla's life. It says Germans triple the wireless plant. They tripled their power. Now, how did they triple their power? The way they tripled their power was they listened to what Tesla said. Tesla went to Sayville and he said, you guys are wasting all your energy sending it out the top of the tower. You need to drive it into the ground and send it through the ground. So they greatly increased the ground connections, and then they became the most powerful wireless plant in the world. There's always a big question, could Tesla uh, achieve what he said he could achieve? Or, or, you know, was he um, uh, full of malarkey or was he real? And this article establishes that when he told them what to do, it worked and they tripled their power. So I think this is the most important article uh, of all the articles ever written about Tesla, because it's at the moment and it is the proof that once he said, if you do X, Y, Z, and Q, you will increase greatly your, your power. And they did X, Y, Z, and Q, and they increased their power. Okay, next slide. Now, the fellow on the left is Privy Counselor Alpert. And Tesla has a dinner with him and, and uh, Carl George Frank before Frank was um, arrested. And Alpert is secretly funding the fifth column uh, with von Papen and uh, other uh, German um, officers uh, living, uh, you know, staying in Washington, D.C. and also in New York. Tesla's friend was George Sylvester Virac, who was a poet, and he was a German propagandist. And he was meeting with Albert, the guy on the left. And Albert was giving him money to run his newspaper, where they were arguing uh, for the Americans not to get into the war. At the same time, though, there were also, there was an assassination attempt uh, on J.P. Morgan Jr. He was actually shot uh, by Munter, who was a uh, part of the, uh, the fifth column. Uh, they exploded ships. They poisoned horses. Uh, they were planning on uh, uh, collapsing canals and, and blowing up bridges, doing everything they could to stop us from getting involved. And so uh, Virac goes to visit Alpert, and he's being tailed by two uh, Secret Service men. 
And uh, they both come out of uh, Alpert's uh, establishment and they go in two different directions. Al Alpert takes a, a train one way and, and Virac takes a train another way. And Alpert falls asleep on the train. And when he gets up and leaves, he leaves his uh, suitcase there by mistake. And the Secret Service guy takes off with the suitcase. And he finds out uh, that there were all the secret codes in there. That Von Papen has a secret name. Uh, Alpert is uh, uh, distributing money to all these people. This all happened before Tesla had been with him. And uh, so that's one crazy aspect of this story. I, I don't know why Tesla didn't know. Uh, because the newspaper eventually covered this. But Alpert was not kicked out of the country until uh, 1917, when the war started. Okay, next slide. So they had, uh, you know, all of these secret um, spies. And in France was Mata Hari. Um, so uh, when Carl George Frank was taken back to Germany, he met with uh, the, the handler of, of uh, Mata Hari in Germany and then came back to America. And there's a scene in, in, in the book and, and from the newspaper articles, the Tesla was called into Broadway to fix one of the wireless uh, station, you know, that, that Telefunken had on Broadway. And it seemed that they were sending secret messages to submarines uh, uh, at that time. Okay, next slide. So here we see Von Papen on the left. He was uh, the diplomat uh, stationed in Washington. He was a, uh, a commander of the army and Captain Boyed was a commander of the Navy, and they were coordinating uh, all of these uh, uh, horrible deeds, including, as I said, the attempted assassination of J.P. Morgan Jr. When von, von Papen returned to Germany, he became the chancellor of Germany. And then when Hitler took power, he became the vice chancellor under Hitler. Zenek uh, was a Nazi sympathizer. When he got back to Germany, you can see him getting an award uh, in the early 1930s, there were two uh, Jewish uh, individuals uh, that were working at, at uh, one of these organizations that Zenek was in charge of, and he had to fire them. Uh, so there's a very dark story, and that's part of the, you know, when I talk about you know, Wizard at War, all of that is linked. That was in, we covered the Spanish-American War, and that was, that's World War I. Okay, the next slide. So now we're going to move towards World War II. Tesla had a particle beam weapon. Now, what happened in 1915, still during World War I, Tesla's tower is still up and running, and it's not going to collapse until 1917 when they actually destroy it. So he uh, admits to the world that he really has a, 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 what he calls the death ray, that, that the tower could be uh, changed into a death ray that could shoot down incoming planes. He's actually trying to talk to um, Woodrow Wilson, who is president of the United States, and maybe Wilson will save his tower. Okay, the next slide. Mr. Safer? Yes. We are coming up on, we're going to have to be moving on soon, and we're going to have to have you back for your full presentation at our next Zoom just because of time. You are amazing, and I don't want to have to hurry you on, but we do have a lot of people. Okay. Uh, you want to give me one more minute? or? Of course. Okay, this is an amazing photo of Tesla. Okay, next slide. Uh, so we see the particle beam weapon. Next slide. So in the Tesla files, we uncovered a lot of uh, different documents. Uh, next slide. And here we are in the bottom of the Hotel New Yorker. Uh, that's Joe Kenny on the right, and Travis Taylor, and Jason Stapleton in the back. And there was a generator that could run everything. Next slide. It run the entire tower. We had a scene with uh, Bill Turbo. Uh, next slide. Um, well, I'll have to keep going. Let's keep going. Next slide. This is the actual particle beam weapon that Buharj revealed to the world. So in World War II, uh, next slide. What I found in my uh, discussions, uh, in my uh, research in the new book, is that Tesla was literally negotiating with Joseph Stalin and with this guy, Voroshilov. I have uh, documents that were uh, decommissioned from uh, Russia. Uh, so they're now revealed. And so I discussed that Tesla actually sold the details to the Russians. Next slide. Next slide. And then he was negotiating, next slide, in England with, uh, this is uh, Sir Hugh Ells and uh, General McNaughton. Next slide. 
This is uh, McNaughton working with Winston Churchill. Tesla was, he was a head of secret weapons development for the Canadians. And I have letters between McNaughton and Tesla. Next slide. Next slide. And that's uh, Van Eva Bush. He's the head of secret weapons development for the Americans. And that's a letter to Tesla wishing him happy birthday. Next slide. Um, uh, this is the death ray article. Next slide. Uh, keep going. Next slide. This was my joke about Van Eva Bush. This was the wrong Bush. Okay. Next slide. So this is the guy who was the head of secret weapons development. He was the head of the Manhattan Project and also the head of uh, uh, the secret weapons, uh, the particle beam weapon for Tesla. Next slide. So he hires John Trump on the right. Trump is uh, Tesla's, um, uh, I mean, is uh, Donald Trump's uncle. And he w worked at MIT. So he was a professor at MIT. And so was uh, Vannie Eva Bush. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, OSS, we found a link to them. Next slide. Next slide. Now, this is uh, General Craig E. Uh, General Craig E uh, was um, believed in Tesla's inventions. Uh, John G. Trump did not. So he was a general. He was the first guy to fly a jet plane uh, for the military. Next slide. Uh, next slide. So I found uh, this, well, we located through Prometheus Films, uh, a document signed by Franklin Roosevelt asking to meet with Tesla shortly before he died. And Roosevelt was trying to deal with the two different uh, uh, ultimate weapons. Uh, next slide. Would it be uh, the particle beam weapon or would it be the atom bomb? And uh, what I found in this new book is that Tesla was negotiating with Franklin Roosevelt, with Joseph Stalin, with General McNaughton, with uh, Van Eva Bush's people, the very highest of echelons. This is when he was this old man. Everyone thought he was this old doddering man. This is not the case at all. He was working with the very highest of echelons. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, keep going, next slide. So the rail gun is the modern, uh, uh, prototype, which is an advancement of the particle beam weapon. And uh, I'll end on this particular slide. Um, what, what we do here is, what I've done here is establish that uh, Tesla's inventions, uh, you know, laid the groundwork uh, for many inventions of the future. Let's do one more slide. Uh, we see the flipper plane becomes the Osprey, you know, and uh, next slide. A flying wing. This is the modern uh, shuttle, which is yet to be built, all based on ideas, based on Tesla. So that's a lot of what my book is about. And, uh, thank you very much. It's been an amazing conference, and uh, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Dr. Seifer, thank you so much. Uh, we definitely want to have you back at one of our um, individual Zooms, as uh, many of our presenters have expressed interest in having individual time. And we would love to do that and hear more about when your book comes out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our next expert is Dr. Quorum. Dr. Quorum.